In today's video, we're gonna be looking for stocks to buy that can provide sizable gains for the next five years and beyond. Obviously, nothing is guaranteed in the stock market, but each of these stocks we'll be looking at have not only high quality, solid balance sheets, but very intriguing growth prospects moving forward. And in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on four stocks to buy for the next five years. But before we look at these, do me a huge favor, click that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into it. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please do not take this as financial advice. And before we begin, let me thank today's video sponsor, which is The Motley Fool. The Motley Fool has a ton of great resources and products available for investors of all different levels. And right now, if you go to fool.com forward slash Mark, you could sign up to receive their 10 best stocks to buy right now. All right, let's jump back into our video, taking a look at four stocks that I am high on at least for the next five years. Now, obviously anything can change depending on what happens in a sector, what happens in an economy. But right now, these are four stocks I am high on for the next five years, beginning with stock number one, which is gonna be Nvidia, stock ticker NVDA. Now, I know this is pretty much a surprise to absolutely no one, and over the past few years, NVIDIA has been the best performing stock in the S&P 500. Not only do they have great demand for their products, but their products are state of the art, especially when we're talking about AI chips. NVIDIA currently sports a market cap of $3.38 trillion, making it one of the three largest companies in the US. And over the past 12 months, shares of NVIDIA are up over 225%. When it comes to a company like NVIDIA, the demand is not the issue. It's a capacity issue. Them and their manufacturers do not have enough capacity to match the outsized demand. A great problem to have. But however, over the past few years, this is a company that continues to ramp up huge amounts of revenue growth, something that I fully expect to continue. Maybe not at the same pace because those comparables are going to be quite tough, but they're going to continue to grow revenues at a fantastic clip. Looking here, you can see just how far the company has come. Looking back at January 2020, revenues for the company were $10.9 billion. The company is expected to end this year with revenues of more than $125 billion. How about that for growth? Speaking of growth, for the next couple of years, it's expected to average around 30% per year for NVIDIA. So even with those tough comparables from prior years, this company continues to find ways to keep growing. Revenue growth is one thing. That top line revenue growth is going to be key for companies moving forward. But many companies that are unable to continue to operate efficiently, some of that top line growth could be all for nothing. So as an investor, it is very key to hone in on how efficient is a management team running the business. Looking here, you can see that NVIDIA is not only a company increasing revenue at a strong pace, but they're also doing it while expanding margins. Operating margins have gone from 26% in 2020 to nearly 62% today. EBITDA margins have increased from 31% in 2020 to more than 65% today. I love everything about that. In terms of valuation, analysts are expecting the company to generate $4.03 per share of EPS next year, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 34.2, well below their five-year average of 51.5. And they have average growth rate of 30% per year for the next few years, which gives the company a peg ratio of 1.1, which is rather intriguing. And that leads us to stock number two, which is going to be Amazon, stock ticker AMZN. If you've watched any of my prior videos or you join my weekly live show on Wednesdays, you know that I'm a big fan of Amazon. Over the next six to 12 months, I fully expect Amazon to be within the top five holdings within my personal portfolio. And as you know, I love Amazon for a number of reasons. Part of that is due to the fact that they have multiple income streams. They have revenue that comes in from cloud, from e-commerce, from subscriptions, from advertising, and much more. The company currently has a market cap of nearly $2 trillion, and over the past 12 months, they are up 47%. Since the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, surrendered his CEO position and stepped aside, the company had a few hiccups early on, but now I think many would agree that this is a company firing on all cylinders, and the growth trajectory looks quite intriguing. 
For the company, revenues in 2019 were $280 billion, and this year, the company is expected to generate more than $635 billion, more than doubling over that time span. For small companies, hearing about a company doubling their revenues, that may not be as impressive, but a company with a market cap of $2 trillion doubling their revenues in a short period of time, now that is impressive. Similar to NVIDIA, Amazon has also found ways to become more efficient, with their operating margins growing from less than 6% in 2020 to nearly 10% in the latest reporting. EBITDA margins have grown from 13.2% to more than 17.5% today. In terms of valuation, analysts are expecting the company to generate $5.80 per share of earnings next year, which equates to a forward P.E. multiple of 32 and a half times, well below their five-year average of 65 times. And earnings are expected to grow each of the next few years at a clip of 30% per year, giving them a peg ratio of 1.3, which again, like NVIDIA, is rather intriguing. And that leads us to stock number three, which is going to be CrowdStrike, stock ticker CRWD. Now, if you've joined any of my quarterly updates here on YouTube, you know two of the sectors that I've been clearly upbeat about, even coming into this year, have been AI and cybersecurity. Well, with CrowdStrike, they are the clear leader in cybersecurity, even with the big fumbling issue they had in the late summer months when they decided to run an update worldwide that impacted a number of companies. And it wasn't a great thing and the stock sold off in a big way. However, a lot of credit needs to be given to the management team for mitigating all of that that went on. CrowdStrike currently has a market cap of $76 billion, and over the past 12 months, even with that massive sell-off, shares are still up 65%. After that blunder, you can see where shares fell from a high of nearly $400 per share down to $215 per share in early August. But lo and behold, now we see shares upwards of more than $300 per share, climbing 45% higher in just a few months. That speaks to not only the quality, but also the resurgence of this company. CrowdStrike is yet another company that has seen huge revenue growth. 2020 revenues for the company were $481 million. 2025 January revenues are expected to come in at $3.9 billion. That is what you call top line growth. In terms of margin, for years, especially early on, the company was not really that profitable or not profitable at all, but they have found a way to become more efficient and profitable over the past few years, and that's expected to continue to expand moving forward. Operating margins in 2020, negative 30%. Operating margins today, 1.5%. EBITDA margins in 2020, negative 24%. EBITDA margins today, plus 12%. In terms of valuations, analysts are expecting earnings per share of $4.30 next year, which equates to a forward multiple of 72 times. So an extremely high multiple here. And the growth rate for the next few years, it's expected to average around 25%. So when it comes to these very high multiple stocks, there's a lot of things that you want to be aware of. You want to stay up with the quarterly results because very high multiple stocks at a 70 times multiple, these are ones that can add a lot more volatility. So if you can't stomach the volatility, CrowdStrike is probably not a stock for you. And that leads us to stock number four, which is going to be Prologis, stock ticker PLD. You think we were going to go through this entire list and I wasn't going to give you a REIT? If you've watched any of my live shows or any of my prior videos, you know that I love the REIT sector. Investing in REITs is yet another way to not only diversify your portfolio, but another way to add real estate exposure. And when it comes to Prologis, it is one of the best, the top warehouse and industrial REIT on the market today. The company currently has a market cap of $113 billion, and over the past 12 months, shares are up 17%. REITs have been a top performing asset class since their inception back in the 1960s. However, with interest rates extremely high over the past few years, it has been a struggle as this is a very interest rate sensitive sector. However, with interest rates expected to come down, I fully expect REITs to continue back to their ways of old, performing like a top performing asset class. Looking here, you can see that analysts are expecting revenue growth near 10% per year each of the next few years. And in terms of valuation for REITs, we look at a figure called FFO or funds from operation, 
where analysts are expecting the company to generate $5.87, which equates to a forward price to FFO of 20.7 times. This is well below the company's five-year average of 25.6 times and below the company's 10-year average of 23 times. In addition, the REIT pays an annual dividend of $3.84 per share, which equates to a dividend yield of 3.1% to go along with their five-year dividend growth rate of 12.6%, which is unusual for a REIT. And management has increased the dividend for 10 consecutive years and counting. So there we just looked at four high-quality stocks that I'm upbeat on for at least the next five years. You have NVIDIA, which is the top chip company. You have Amazon, which is not only the top e-commerce company, but also the top cloud company, and also one of the top advertising companies. And then we moved directions and went to the top cybersecurity company, and now I'm giving you a high-quality top REIT to invest in as well. So down in the comments section below, let me know which of these four stocks are you most upbeat on over the next five years. And if you have a different stock, also let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you haven't done so, make sure you click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.